There is nothing as powerful as understanding the life in God. I don't know. There is nothing as as powerful as understanding the life that we carry in God. Experiences, our experiences, our personal experiences with God. I want to say something, but I don't know that some of you are able. <laughs> able. But let me give you the short. When the Bible says that we behold like in the mirror the glory of God, we are changed. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are changed into the same image, image. From glory to glory. Every time you hear truth, every time you hear truth, not a sermon, not cheap talk, not random rhetoric praise the Lord not cheap bantam not funny platter just truth every day you listen to the word and you receive truth the Bible says you're changed so physically you might not see but they mean that spiritually something is not happening you see some people ask themselves what's the point of going to church or prayer or weekly meeting why don't i pray one day and then i the other day is fellowship the other day i don't then side day i can come then today i'm not able the other day i'm not able okay today i'm able or oh, the other day i had a commitment or oh, the other day i may not and some of some commitments are, are serious they are unavoidable some commitments are unavoidable but some are avoidable. Do you understand? For God. But some people don't choose to be with God. You understand? And then somebody comes and tells you, I'm hungry for God. I want to know God. I have my own version of hunger. But, but it's there. And, and I understand. They have their own version of hunger. And I understand what they mean by that. But if every man would think for a moment and actually realize that every time I'm hearing the word of God, I am changed. Every time. I am changed. I am, give me an amplified. He says, behold, with open Jesus, with unveiled faces. Unveiled faces. That's why I was insisting on the word which is true. Because if a man is ministered to and their faces are veiled, it means that they are casting a light on his eyes that will never give him the picture in full color of the things of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes words fail me when I think of the places that some people cannot even imagine to go. And not because these places don't exist, but because they are too They are, they are indescribable. They are indescribable in God. They are indescribable. You cannot describe some places in God. When he sits for one hour here and starts preaching, he's just speaking of places he has gone. A man, when, when, when a man was speaking behind my back, somebody was telling me, you know, I always know, either I dream it, or if I don't dream it, God tells me. Or if God doesn't tell me, somebody will tell me. The spirit of gossip submits to me. It it brings it back and says, I'm sorry, but they say it. So I got to know. And somebody said, that guy is preaching too much. He'll get dry. <laughs> yeah, he'll run out. Then he'll start repeating himself. 
wow i say this guy doesn't know i've been preaching for 10 years <laughs> actually 12 so going 30 now he doesn't know he doesn't have a clue he doesn't have a clue if i repeat something i either repeat it for someone who i think didn't understand it or for someone who came for the first time and they need to hear it <laughs> you understand what i'm saying that's to the extent of certain things have to be stressed spiritually but when you say that i can run out in my head i thought he has a long way to go he not me i didn't seek to be right eh? i just realized he has a very long way to go because his waters are too shallow so such a man thinks he can preach and run out do you understand what i'm saying he thinks he can actually preach and run out his waters are too shallow brother we dug so deep so deep until we hit bedrock what we drank from can't dry these are rivers of living water we're just feeding with cups <laughs> tell me by can't run dry tell him it's not a fake statement it's how deep your waters go it's how deep your waters are how deep they are tell anybody how deep they are how deep they are how deep they are i have the grace on my life too because i dug so deep and when i landed on the end i got something that can't run out do you understand what i'm saying you will never run out tell anybody you'll never run out sometimes i'll go for meetings and put their god feel where he has poured i say now some people think that when we are preaching let me tell you something if you have been in my meeting and i decide to preach some of you how many of you have, have been in a meeting where i've preached for like three hours or four yes you realize that the deep i preach the, the more i go the deep i dig the more i go the deep i dig that's why one of those good days when we are doing those university things i want to preach for like four hours straight and you see what happens when i preach for four hours i know many will die in the first two they'll be out they'll be hearing with their spirit but they'll be dead <laughs> you understand what i'm saying and i'm not saying this to boss no i'm trying to tell you that some people are not i don't think they are qualified to feed people because their waters they are not even enough for them themselves i don't know if you understand what i'm saying the, 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 they are wells they are not even enough for them now i need to reserve ah if i run out you pick me god feed him where he has poured because they think that when a man is preaching he's pouring from a cup eh, that is empty or a bucket that is empty you understand what i'm saying e- eternal eternal experiences when a man understands eternal experiences he's any man who has been through a really eternal experience i'm not just talking about falling down and say wow well, then you get up and you say and this got slain no i'm talking of any man who has gone through eternal experiences huh? the primary revelation of any man who has walked in eternal experiences is the bottomlessness of things in god they are endless are you hearing me now by these two men there is one who is going to the bottomless things to dig to see how deeper they are hallelujah eh? there is one who is going every day trying to launch deep to see how deep these waters are do you understand what i'm saying he goes deeper and deeper and deeper discovering the depths every definition called bottomless you understand and i've seen that even the most bottomless things in god have the bottom called faith yes you can go as far as you believe 
Do you understand? Every man's end called bottom is as far as he believes. It's as far as he believes. There are some people who have ended, technically speaking. Physically, they are still preaching but or ministering, but they've ended. They can never go further. And that's it. Because the way they were oriented into the gospel, they were oriented in 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 in, in things that had bottoms that were so near. And these things were presented as value. For example, the Bible says that every time Moses is read, a veil takes over their face, right? These veils that we're talking about are the things that draw our the bottomless the, 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 where our end the, where the bottom things are. In other words, oh okay, let me explain it in simpler English. You can only go you see, walking in the spirit begins from a faith experience than it is from a curious spirit. Okay? It's not the curiousness to dig out. It's the faith. And I'll explain how this faith works. When the Bible says that all things are yours, I'm just giving you an example. When the Bible says all things are yours, that's a fact. And that's the truth. All things are yours. But what does God mean when he says all things are yours? What does he really mean? It means that somebody says all things are yours, and somebody says, oh, mobile phone, uh, Samsung S7, uh, Nokia 3310, all things are mine. Okay, that's, how, that's wonderful. That's us pertaining to the world. But when the Bible says that all things are yours, right? All things are yours. All things are yours. All things are yours. What does that mean? It means that Revelation is yours. The depths of God are yours. Hallelujah. There is a man who digs out for God. How deep can I go? Because the depths that I can go is the depths I can reveal. Huh? And there is a man who goes to the bottom of bottomless things. That's why I say that some of you might not understand me. Wololo. <laughs> somebody who does that for me. <laughs> Boy, did I even start it? <laughs> Please. Okay, let me conclude because I realize you might go, some of you might run mad. But let me conclude. When the Bible says that with open faith unveiled, uh, with open faith, uh, give me amplified, it says, uh, but all of us with an unveiled faith behold, because we continue to behold in the Word, because we continue, because we continue, not because we regularly. Or once in a while. No. He says, because we continue. He didn't say, if we continue. He didn't say, when we continue. He says, because we continue. Now, let me... Do, do, are you seeing that, right? Because we continue to behold in the word of God. As in a mirror. The glory of God. Right? Because we continue. Because we continue. Because we continue. So, how, how am I changed into the very... Because... God, now that's the promise. He says, because you're continuing to sit in the Word every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you're in this. He says, because you continue, because you continue, because you continue, because you continue to behold, because, because we, because, because you, because. Because you continue. Because there's no day you waste time in the presence of God. It's not there. Man, mysteries every man, the mysteries every kid, the mysteries every man, the mysteries. Okay, okay, how much can you have? You're satisfied, you're too early. Yet you're in a rental. And you're already satisfied with, you're in a rental. 
you're paying rent and you're already satisfied. Oh, every time I hear the word, every time they're preaching the word. And I'm like, okay, what, what have you done? What have you even done? What, how far have you walked? You probably even, after now, the person who people are going to, somebody, you have somebody's money, you have to pay it. But could it be there? Do you understand what I'm saying? You've not even raised one dead body. You're tired. You're already tired at your age. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, I had an observation, and this is true. And I'm going to warn many of you, because I'm going to help many of you. I'm going to warn many of you, because I'm going to help. Now I'm speaking something so deep. You know, I was telling somebody, a man can be so deeply anointed, but without a mature anointing. He can even be too mature as an individual, but without a mature anointing, a matured anointing. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know when he talks of uh, the, 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 what you were sharing about, when he speaks of uh, he shall be like a tree planted by the riverside, and the Bible says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, right? The Amplified there says it shall come to maturity. Everything he doeth shall prosper and come and come shall prosper and come shall prosper and come to maturity. Everything he does shall prosper and come to maturity. It shall prosper. You see, it's, you see, it's one thing to have a prosperous ministry, prosperous marriage, prosperous business, prosperous everything, but when it's not come to maturity, it's not mature. It's prosperous, but it's not mature. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can have an anointing that is prosperous, but it's not mature. It's not mature. It's not mature. It's not mature. That is why sometimes when I hear some accusations by some men of God, I don't have an answer. Can you understand? Because I imagine I have to get to their level and think like them. Can you understand? And thinking like them means that I need to now establish truth again to tell them this is not true. Do you understand? And you realize God doesn't do that. God doesn't come from heaven to say, this is not true, you're lying. E Elijah, am I the one? You see? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there's something so eternal about truth. I don't know that some of you understand what I'm saying. It's like a young man was in my office today. He told me, oh, they said a lot of things about me in my former church. And da, 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 da. So I told him, hush, hush, hush. Everything they said about you. I was telling him, I told him, die mother. He died mother. And I told him, and I knew these things they told. Because from his former church, somebody came from the former church and also warned me about him. And I told him everything I know. But I told him, but have I ever called you? No. Have I ever judged you? No. Have I ever looked at you differently? No. Why did I not look at you that way? Because I see from somewhere. I don't see from where some people see things. I don't see from it. I don't see from where some people see things. I don't see from their angle. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't see from their angle. I don't see. I don't see from their angle. I don't see from their angle. I don't know that some of you understand what I mean. Someone goes, oh, can you believe? Hey, so-and-so, he's talking about me. Oh, he's fighting me. I'm like, okay, wow. Okay, you are actually in the level of fighting with each other. You understand? When I look from there, I, I don't see from their angle. I don't see from their angle. Because now at that particular point, it's not what the accuser is saying. At that particular point, it's even the thought that they can imagine vain things. Vain things, I mean to say nothingness and make it something. Do you understand what I'm saying? For example, if somebody comes from someone and says, Kari, can you believe it that uh, Merab talks about me? Now Merab is here, right? Merab talks about me. And then you, you know you've never talked about them. No, no, you, you have not forgotten. You know you have never talked about them. That's one level of seeing things because it means you have the ability to you understand but when you are at another level where you know you cannot talk about them that's another level do you understand what i'm saying who understands what i'm saying 
that's another level of seeing things because we are no longer at I have never. I cannot now get into a conversation with someone who assumes that you can for you to tell them you can't because it means you are at the level where you can. They assume you can. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you are at the level where you can't, it's not in your nature to, it's like now, my skin is African, right? And then someone comes and says, no, 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 no. Uh, you're not an African. You're British. No? He's British. <laughs> and then I start telling you, no, I'm African. No. See, there are things that in me, even if you say I'm British, you will take me to Britain and I, there are things in me that will start showing I'm African even without me doing it. Because even the way we walk, eh? we walk with too much swag. You understand what I'm saying? Brits don't walk like that. Admit impediments. Porsche Dobinson. Now listen, <laughs> I want to finish. So, you see, this, these are people who see, they're both believers, but they're seeing from another angle. Another angle. You understand what I'm saying? One time somebody came and told me, hey, some man of God said, and then I told the guy, I told the guy, I, because I knew the man of God, I told him, look, he said what? He said that. I said, okay, now, right now you either kneel down and repent, or I pray right now and you die. He knelt down and said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, apostle. So I asked him, so what made you think you could lie to me? I also don't know what was on me. Then I told him, why? This is why I told him to kneel down. Because I knew that the other man can't. We were not at the level of, can't, what? Carry that man. How could you talk about me? You know what I'm saying? Some men I would even know that they've talked. And then the man denies it. Okay, yeah, I, I believe you. I believe you. Because I realize, okay, we are now at the level where he has even denied. Then I say, okay, now. I'm at a very wrong place. I should not be at this level of him denying. I tell now he's lying to me. Then even me, I tell him, but you are lying. You understand? Because it goes back to when we were children, when we were going to school. You're lying. Ah, you're lying. You remember those? Oh, you see? You're lying, sir. Mm -mm. And you, you know, if I say, huh? I'm not lying. Let me get to that level. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because... Then, when the anointing matures on your life, it comes with a certain responsibility to it. That responsibility doesn't ask you to be responsible. It just works by the nature of that anointing. Do you know why God has never opened the heaven to shame any man? He's too anointed. He's, God is too anointed. I don't know if you understand. He, he can't open in heaven and say, Yeah, heaven opened. And he said, Mirab. The only time we see heaven open, it's a family. This is my son, in whom I'm well pleased. That's the first time we see the anointing. That's how, that's how you know heaven's open. He opens heaven to a son, not to disqualify. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, okay, that was just an example. But I need to tell you that see, some of you, yes, you're increasing in the anointing. Sorry, you're increasing the anointing upon your life. You might also be increasing as an individual, right? But you see, God intends that your, the anointing on your life matures. There's a maturity to the anointing. There's a maturity to the anointing. It will judge how you relate with people. It will judge how you talk with everyone. It will judge how to talk to people, how you ought to talk with people. It, it will teach you to keep quiet sometimes. It will tell you don't talk. Here, eh? Don't talk. I know you want to, you're too annoyed, you have a lot to say, but keep quiet. Uh -uh. God, I must say to my score, this girl has been too much. No, keep quiet. But, but everyone thinks, yes, at this particular point, this particular issue, I'm the only one who can get you out. Don't even try to get yourself out, you're going to spoil it. Keep quiet. Then you hold your peace and go to bed and ask like nothing happened, right? And then, if you're a babe, he tells you keep quiet, you open your mouth. He says, okay, well, there's something on you that has not yet grown. Because under that anointing, the baby anointing, you can even judge a man and things come to pass. Yeah. But you judged him prematurely. 
judgment came upon him because of the anointing upon your life but it's because the, the anointing upon your life has not matured. That's why there are people who, who glory in people failing. I, I mean, you'll see, you'll see, you're cursed, you're going to see, you wait, I fear for you. You see, you see look at God, look at God, the, the most mature anointing you know. He still imputes righteousness on them which believe. They put this man on the cross, poor, poor, and he says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know the end of Do you understand what I'm saying? He's on the cross, but he's saying forgive them. On the cross. On the cross. With nails in his hands and feet. On the cross. Not just funny words spoken about him. On the cross. And his heart is still bleeding with love, saying, God, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. And then they talk on a man one word and say, You will wait, you will see, you will die, you will wait, he, you will sown, you will weep. And I'm like, Okay, wow. Wow. How many things has God let, God let you off the hook of? How many things has God got forgiven you? Do you know why I don't hold grudges with men? I'm a matured spirit. I don't. Even if a man is as evil as what, let him be evil. I still have space for him somewhere up there to forgive him. Because those are the things that prove maturity. Do you understand what I'm saying, child of God? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I would see a man falling in a ditch, which I know he dug, and still weep. Because I would still separate him from the devil any day. And know that guy falling in the deep, Jesus died for him. He wills that no man perish. He wills that no man perish. He wills that no man perish. That's why he ever liveth. Some of you, he's not ever living, just he's, do you know when the Bible says he ever liveth to make intercession? That means every morning Jesus is on his knees praying for people. If ever liveth to make intercession, ever liveth to make intercession, ever liveth, ever liveth to make intercession, ever live, that's the matured spirit. So some of you, you're not just coming here to increase, to know how to do more miracles, signs and wonders. You're coming here because God wants to mature you. Not just as an individual, but the anointing on your life. 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 One time somebody had me they didn't I knew. And then one time I sat them down and I told them everything I know. And I told them I've forgiven you. And they said I thought I knew God. Now I've seen him. They just told me I've seen God. I thought I knew. Now I had had. Now I've seen him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now when he was preaching, eh, rendering, you see, you see, I was, I was forwarded to when he's 60, 70, right, 80. And I say, God, if this man is speaking all this stuff at his age, how is he going to look like at 50? With this stuff, how is he going to look like? Do you understand what I'm saying? If he knows this much, he has a maturity of spirit to this much. How is he going to look like at 50? How is he going to look like at 50? What shall we see when he's 50? And he knows the Bible and he's meditated. He's, he's redone the sermons he's doing in the spirit by meditation. He, he doesn't need to preach them. He just goes back to it and thinks and meditates. That's the thing. He says that man shall be prosperous. And everything he does, the Bible says, shall come to maturity. See, there are people who are very anointed and they have prosperous ministries, but their ministries are not, their anointing on men is not mature. It's not mature. It's great, but it's not mature. It has tenets of childhood things. Childhood things. Childhood things. Childhood things. Childhood things. Childhood things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Childhood things. Few childhood things. Like okay, well, this is, this is childhood. 
his childhood, the way he has spoken it, his childhood, the way she has responded, even though she's anointed, this is childhood. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is childhood. There are things, you should remember when we were growing up, you could be a very smart kid in class, but you're not mature, you see? So they, you get in a conversation of adults and, and your brain can't cope. But you're a smart kid in class, but your brain can't cope because even though you are smart, you're not mature. There are also things the, anoint, the mature anointing can do and an immature anointing can do. For example, an immature anointing, doesn't matter how deep it is, eh? it might not establish a ministry in another man besides itself. He can have as much anointing, but he can never reproduce ministry in himself in another man. Yet a matured anointing can multiply its ministry in another man. And you look at that man and say, this man is the result of this guy. You can already see the likeness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Over the years, you're going to see guys preaching like me a lot, walking like me. It's not that they... You some of you think it's evil. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's not evil. If you go back to the book of Acts, the Bible says they had all things in common. It's not evil to have all things in common. It's not evil. If these things are good, they are lovely. It's not evil to have things in common. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not evil. I wish, yes. And all that believed were together and had all things common. All things common. That means you might end up one day we are talking like the same way. People are acting the same way. Someone says, but this guy speaks exactly like Apostle Christ. Yes, it's because we have to have certain things in common. There's, it won't end on the pulpit. There are many other things. It, when they are knowing me and this is how I respond, it's the same way you, you respond. One time a man of God backed in a meeting. Oh, and he said it was the Holy Spirit. I said, okay, well, now if you continue like this, you're going to teach a, a, an upcoming minister to also think that when you're under the anointing, you back. Self-control. the fruit of a regenerated spirit in Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I see some young pastors also backing. Wow. Wow. Why? Because he's copying someone who backed. You understand what I'm saying? But sometimes it's not that it's maturity. No. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it could be. But sometimes it's not. Man might back under the Holy Spirit. That when one who comes under the Holy you can tell. But then there's another one who also backs. And then he said, no, this isn't the Spirit, brother. You're in the flesh. And the people we preach to know the difference, by the way. I want to because So they don't say many things. But they see and know things. Are you learning something? Do you understand? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not wrong to have things in common. It's like that one day I heard this guy say, some guy, I felt sorry for him, he said, a man goes and hears a man and then he preaches the same someone the man preached. That is not godly. I asked, you copy Paul. Why don't you write your own romance and leave the man? Revelation is not exclusive to the man. The question is, is what he's sharing from understanding or just copy lines? That's the question. But we are all repeating Paul, sir. We are quoting him in Corinth every day. Now, Paul, now, no, no you, you don't do Paul. You preach your own. God told you this is the foundation from which every man should build. And that's how you know pride. Pride, pride is a very funny spirit. It appears like humility, you know, come, uh, uh, presenting itself as maturity. What did I say? Did you hear, did you hear it? What did I say? 
presenting itself as maturity. Someone speaks like they are mature, they act like they are humble, but they are proud. I don't know that makes sense. So I don't have a problem if you will do the man to someone. Just have the spirit. Paul <laughs> tells the guys, put these things in remembrance, always to the brethren. Now, if you refuse to put those things in remembrance, but because for you, you, you have a problem. You have a very big problem, a very, very big problem. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, there are common things. There are things we will have in common. Many things we will have in common. Anyway, why was I even going there? I was trying to tell you that because you are continuing in the Word of God, because you are continuing in the Word of God, you see, because you, let me tell you, some of us, we love the Word too much that even if you wanted me to sit the whole night and hear, I would hear. The first time I met Pastor Zach, we sat at Sam's restaurant. I remember I was from working about 8.30. We talked until Sam's closed at about 11, I think, 10 30 11. We walked from Sam. Sam's was opposite Shore House. Huh? Shore House. You know Shore House, Bombo Road? How many of you know where Shore House, Bombo Road is? You who love this, Ebenezer there. So, we crossed that place, walked around Watoto Kampala Road, talking. Crossed through, talking. Went on that street up to Queensway. We didn't even know we were on Queensway. From Sam's. We walked Bank of Uganda, talking. Ginger Road, Light, Nando's, talking. Through those electronic shops, down to the furniture mats, to the lights of Ginger Road, we were talking. We crossed the road, talking. Went through that whole that whole place to, as if heading to to monitor. We walked, walked up to monitor publications, Green Hill. We said, eh, eh. let's go home. We sat on the borders and went home. That guy knew he belonged here. I, I, I knew. I, I didn't need any man. I, I didn't need any man. I didn't need to know. I had not. I knew that this man is my kind of person. Because some of you, you can't even talk about the word. Mutula mwegea. Guanifa alilu kutu. Aisha shuna. Ito yogera. Gossip and slander. Gossip and slander. Aha. What is what you're telling me going to make me love her more? Nenda gamba aposo. Mami tomu gamba. Ngambi nenda gamba aposo. Mami tomu gamba. And they bring them. Then they come like this. It is I know God. The aposo is going to stop me. Do you understand what I'm saying? We talk through. The word up to the end. We could have walked up to home and not felt an end. Yet I could not walk. But I'm just walking. It's in the road. How? It's far. You understand? But the word of God consumed us. I remember one time there was another man of God as from an overnight. We looked for a car and failed to find any. We walked for three kilometers. We were just looking for a car to take me to, But I was, I was just, we were just talking. We didn't even know the time was passing. But I realized that all of those boys who knew too much are very humble. They are very humble. Because the more you see God, the more humble you become. When you see a proud man, it doesn't matter how anointed. He hasn't seen God yet. God humbles. God breaks. Praise God. So, as you continue to behold in the Word as in a mirror, you constantly, you see that, are being transfigured. I want to encourage you. So you're like, but, but I'm praying every day. Why am I praying? It's very simple. You're constantly being transfigured into his very own image. In what? In what? Ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another. It comes. It comes. Do you know why for us in the early days, we used to attend almost every meeting in my early years, almost every meeting, and I can tell you, every guy who fell off that place, that 
pattern is is they're still producing the results of men who fell off they're still born again but they're still producing the results of men who fell off if you knew me from campus days you'd realize i've never gone back i've never changed i'm still this addicted now i'm more addicted than ever before i don't even know how to stop anymore do you understand what i'm saying i just wonder what god how come a man loses it in the middle and gets tired Oh, today I'll pray here, tomorrow I might not, I'm sorry, I won't make it, then tomorrow they appear, then the other day they don't, then the other day they're here, oh, then, they're, then, they're, then, they're, then they're praying, then the other day they say, okay, now I can't pray, and then, then another one goes in the presence of God, you realize what is taking him on high is a need, a need, not to know God, a need. But how come some people grow in their anointing, and some don't, they continue to behold in the word, constantly. That's the only difference. Oh, what's the secret? Hey, somebody brings a hey, I want this. One time, one time a little boy came and told me, I want the sevenfold of your anointing. He put up his hand. I just walked away. The spirit world had no words for him. You know there are times when the spirit world has no words for a man. That moment, the spirit world had no words for him. He didn't even know what he was asking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you right now, you might not know what is happening inside you. But you're being transfigured. You're being transfigured. Bakulinde, 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 bakulinde. Let them wait for you. Oh, but Fanero is going so fast. He's going so fast. Much What are the secrets? I want to know the secrets. And I, you see, some of them. I want to tell them. I wish you could just come and first relieve part of my life. You'd understand the secrets. They think it's like three points one, do this, then do that, then what is the concentration? I said, no, that's not what builds ministry. Ministry is more than that. If you don't do build it that way, you're going to build it through gossip, slander, abuse, manipulation, and all these kinds of things. If you don't choose to behold. Let me tell you, success is not a mistake. Prosperity is not a mistake. Maturity is not a mistake. It's not a gift. No, it is a yielded spirit choosing to continue. In beholding in the word continue it's like i told people huh? never allow a day to go by when you've not had the word never allow it look look at everyone who is struggling in their lives look at everyone you, you know people are, may i pray may i pray may i pray by the way eh. but there are people i look at and i'm like okay this one either they've just started beholding they're not they don't have a story of beholding. No, they were just attending overnight. They were just attending nice services. They didn't behold in the word. You see, there's a difference. You can be in a service and not behold in. And just be excited in. You understand me? And and, and just be told, you mean, just, just attend through. Oh, I mean, I, but now I've been praying. No, that's why I pray. Every time you're in the service, you see. Every time you're in the service, you see. Every time you see it in a service and the truth, see, I have told you, and this is what I was trying to tell you that many of you should never forget this is because it's eternal. Every person I know who has never continuous in this world, never continuous in this world, they were occasional. A certain time of a month they are there, then another month they are away. One day they are in three days later they are back not because they are busy but because the word is not that priority it's not that a priority it's not that a priority i've seen that many of those guys there is something wanting in their lives observe them there's always something they're struggling with that never lets go because there are things only the presence of god can fix me when i was growing up in campus the lord told me in second year third year he told me whatever you do in this world never leave the presence even if you make a mistake come back in the presence and tell god i screwed last night i screwed up so badly i abused somebody i punched somebody in the face i did this come back in the presence and sit there it's the only thing that can make you whole 
Oh, I'm so unholy. I feel unclean. God, I'm not coming back to church. I feel unclean. No, no, see, because you are taught religiously. You'd never understand. Some people are taught religiously because they are judged in churches there. The men men with, with ignorance eh, have, have chased men out of church because they don't understand what the presence of God can do. And that's what the devil wants to do. He puts on a guilt trip on you and tells you don't go to pray. You're too evil to pray. Who are you to pray? How can you even pray? After what you did, come back in the prayers and tell God I screwed up. But where can I run from your presence? Where, where can I escape from you, God? If I put my bed in hell, there you are. Even if I... I, I got through the winds and crossed them. Yes, he says, you there, with there, your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. I, I cannot run away from you. Even if you screw up, how come back in the prison and stand and say, come on, bad, ugly, wicked, and all this, but I'm here. I am here. You know how to fix me. Tell your neighbor, never leave the presence. Tell them one more time, never leave the presence. Never leave the presence of God. Hallelujah. So, there is going to come a time, and, 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 I, and I can tell you the truth, that walking for over 13 years, almost every day, ministering, almost every day, almost every day, almost every day, almost every day. It's, it has put me in a place with my Lord. I, 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 there are things that outside people see that they call profit. But those things are brought to nothing. They pass away. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I have found profit in God. I have found profit in God. I'm not talking of the cars. I'm not talking of the houses. I'm not, I'm not talking of land. I'm, I'm not talking of that. That's nothing. Because this stuff is temporal. Tomorrow you're going to die and leave those millions on the account. But I found something. When I talk of joy, I'm not talking it from the way some of you understand joy. Some of you, it's very easy to give you joy. An iPhone 6. Not even 7. An iPhone 6 is enough to make you lose sleep. You are working the whole night trying to understand the applications. Smart switch, how does this one work? The colors, then you play the video, you yawn, and then you put on the battery. And then That's why, me, I told people, eh? there, there are things I would buy and people say, wow, congratulations, Jose. But me, in my head, I'm not excited. Not in a bad way. But I found something that really excites me. I know where my excitement is. And I could trade even what they are calling excitement for that thing any day, and it's in God. And I'm not joking. And I'm not making it up. It's the truth. If you drive a nice car, you had to. It's just that simple. You had to. If you build a nice house, you had to. Congratulations is wonderful. And so, yeah, you must be excited. And, and I'm looking at them, I'm looking at, okay. What is your definition of excitement? Because the way you're looking at excitement, for me, it's different. When, when I talk about excitement for me, it's when I'm in that room and I find myself laughing alone. Nobody has given me money. That's called excitement. Well, what and you say? No, no, wait, wait. Listen, listen to that woman laughing. Honestly, listen. Eh? I just stopped. I just wanted you to listen to her. Eh? Where is she? Eh, Mulekia, Now, eh? Even if you bought a car like how, you can't be like that. That's not what a, no car can no mansion can make you cry like if you can't it's not there there's something she has found jesus told that person that shall not be taken away cars can be taken away when you die houses cannot be taken but mary has received something it's what i own at raise lazarus no house can give that no house no car can give that joy do you understand what I'm saying? 
and just the joy of being able to talk about him and every time we talk about him he's able to show himself undeservedly like i mean unrestrained he's he's not restrained at all for me yeah people talk about him and they walk off and he's like no can show up on that one they, they are deep but they don't know what they're talking about do you understand what i'm saying and then another man starts just to preach and he comes and says you know you you know you you know see some of you don't understand eh? it's like when i pray for people and almost the whole room slain get slain eh? some of you think eh? it's power from on high see it's more than just power from on high it's something coming out of my spirit now if what is coming out of my spirit can slay a whole room you must imagine what it does when it's inside me alone because you they carry out 20 of you 30 of you you understand i didn't sleep last night i was crying the whole night you are screaming i was laughing so that's the total sum of each individual's experience but that was just one hour of me sharing one hour of me sharing god oh but a minute now you imagine all of that combined inside me <laughs> how do you think i'd be feeling <laughs> can you imagine what what it feels like to have all that stuff inside you and still you have to be normal hallelujah you understand what i'm saying those things do things inside here everything pastor zach was speaking it's inside him before he spoke it it was him there are things it does to him do you understand what I'm saying? That is, that's, the, that's now the beginning of what we call meditation. When those things start to kick you. They start to kick inside you. They start to kick inside you. You cannot get to that level and say, I failed to pray because I didn't have transport. You walk. You walk. Because... That day we had transport, but we walked because at that particular point we didn't even regard that we didn't have transport. At that particular point, transport was not an issue. Oh, I'm sorry, Apostle. Sometimes I really want to pray, but sometimes I work hard and I get tired. I banked for six years. By the time I left the bank, final was two thousand members, and university meetings were running through, and I was a banker. Hey. Do you have a special grace? No, I don't have a special grace. I just understood that the only way for me in this was to continue. Simply to behold the word in a mirror constantly. Do you understand what I'm saying? He continue to behold. Continue to behold. Me, that's my secret. Continue to behold. Let this book of the law not depart from your mouth. He says, Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayst observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then, for then, for then, then shall you make thy way prosperous and have good success. But I failed to be successful. How continuously are you beholding? in this world oh but there are people who don't behold and then but if then they are successful you're not them how long do they have it how long do they have what they didn't behold in the world it's temporal it's temporal because if they receive by the wisdom of the world it, it will go but why do you receive by god this is not just your prosperity on earth and success this places you somewhere in the heavenly things it determines where you're going to be in heaven in heaven we are not going to be equal some men shall have crowns and some shall scripture so this is deeper than how come some people they are driving cars yet they don't over pray what is a car how do you define prosperity that's just one of those things outside but what is inside that day is it's eternal hallelujah so he was sharing about this life in god and i was just seated there thinking do this some of these people even understand 
why we preach every day. Some of you, why do we preach every day? Because we also need to behold every day too. We, there's no way we cannot continue. There's going to come a time one day where you can hit like one stroke of, of service almost every day. That you pray, behold it, behold it, behold it. You'll see what will happen. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. Somebody say from glory to glory. You're not wasting time in the presence of God. You have not wasted time in the presence of God. It's 10 p.m. <laughs> wow. Forgive me. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that woman. Take a minute and just talk to God. Oh, you are. 